in yeah, school. Yeah, basically, the, he he plot to, for them to kill each other, and then he would take take down the upper class, fuck the bourgeoisie. Yeah, <laughs> dismantle the establishment. Exactly, he would be a freedom fighter. Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight we have our czar of source material, John. Really, dude? Right in front of my salad? (laughs) How is that salad, by the way? Fucking shitty. (laughs) (laughs) And we have our shivering Shota Shotaro. I hate it here. (laughs) When do you like it here? I hate it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, tonight we have gotten together to uh, discuss something. It, it, it's a topic that was actually suggested by a uh, user in our, our member of our Discord server, uh, Corin Sensei. And uh, I thought we would try it out and see how it goes. It's sort of a fun little discussion where... Uh, we the the three of us that are gathered here have each brought two different pairs of anime characters. Uh, well, one of them, uh, which Show brought, is actually a Mahua character. <laughs> Fucking didn't even stick to the guidelines. Literally unreal. Okay, well, technically, nowhere on this dock did it say anime. So uh, that is that is that is true. It does say just characters. So you're right. You could have literally brought a character from a live action television show, I guess. Honey, one of my characters is Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, shit. That, now that you, you know now that I know it's not just anime characters, I could have oh man. Whatever. Honey, reading comprehension. I, I can't anyway. read. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you're expecting so much of me. You expect this czar of source material to know how to read? What the I know, fuck? It's too much. <laughs> uh, so now what we have done, what we're going to do rather, is um, for each of these pairs of characters, we're going to take character A and drop them into the world that character B is from, and then vice versa with character B going to uh, character A's world. And sort of we're going to discuss how we all think that that particular character would act in this uh, new world uh, with their personality, with their morals, with their alignment, what have you. Um, we also might talk, because some of these characters that we have uh, listed here do have certain powers or abilities. We might also uh, discuss how we think that they would use those powers in the new world, but it's more along the lines of a discussion of how we think these characters with these different personalities would react and uh, respond to situations that characters in this other world face. I know that sounds kind of convoluted. We're going to try and make it as simple as possible and just kind of have fun with this discussion. Um, I also, we brought two bears of characters. I don't know if we're going to get to all of them, uh, but I feel like, uh, I feel like two pairs is, is, is a good starting point. Um, also Natai was supposed to be here. He couldn't make it. So, uh, thank you for stepping in, John. I didn't want to be here. I'm here against my will. <laughs> Call the police. I hate it here. <laughs> moshi moshi police this. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get started with uh, my first pair of characters. I have actually selected uh, two characters, each from a different isekai. Um, one of them is Rudy Grey Rat from Mushoku Tensei, also known as um, Jobless Reincarnation. Uh, the other one I have chosen is Kazuma Sato from Konosuba. Um, I think one thing we should do for all of these characters is give sort of a little, I don't know, a 10 second introduction to the character for people who may not be familiar. Um, so, uh, Rudy from Mashoku Tensei is a guy who is isekai and in the, uh, the real world, he was kind of this loser, uh, jobless as the title would imply, uh, neat, um, 
and he gets transported in this world where he actually has to grow from essentially being born into adulthood. Um, and he has this ma- these magical abilities that you kind of have in Isekai, these fantasy Isekai. Um, and a lot of the story is just kind of based around him, you know, watching him grow up. Uh, Kazuma, for those who don't, for the five people who have never heard of or seen Konosuba at this point, um, kind of the same thing, sort of a loser, a neat in the real world, gets transported into this very generic fantasy world, which is uh, essentially supposed to be a parody of uh, fantasy tropes and um, isekai settings, um, and is surrounded by absolute incompetence everywhere he looks. Um, and that's part of the reason I wanted to take these two characters and compare them because I think the more interesting thing is putting Kazuma in Rudy's world because Kazuma is so used to being surrounded by incompetence. I'd really like to see how he would respond to being in a world where he's actually surrounded by people who are moderately competent in what they're doing. Because if you think about it, like the world of Mishiko Tensei, at least the people that are around Rudy, they kind of know what they're doing. Like they have these skills and their abilities that they're trying to teach him. But so I would argue that Kazuma would not do very well in Mushoku Tensei, mainly because the thing about Konosuba is that there's kind of um, there's no consequences, right? Like if Kazuma dies, he can just be revived later on at the temple or whatnot, or with um, Aqua pulling. with Eris, <laughs> with yeah, because er- Eris pads her chest, man. So, like in Mushoku Tensei, he doesn't have that. So I, I think it would be entertaining to watch Rudy inside of Konosuba's world because like <laughs> they're kind of similar characters where they, they come from a neat background, but one has motivation. The other one doesn't really. And, you know, the entire environment of Mushoku Tensei is it's pretty fucked up. Um, there's like, you know, there's actual consequences. There's death. You can lose a fucking limb, stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I kind of think so, too. I think one of two things would happen if Cosmo found himself in, in the world of Mushoku Tensei. I think either he would probably die pretty quickly, um, or he would kind of just go back to being what he was in the um, in the real world he came from, sort of this, like, shut-in loser kind of character. Because part of the reason that Cosmo has this call to action is simply because he's surrounded by incompetence. Like, if you think about it, if you're just mildly better than an incompetent person and you're surrounded by people who are equally incompetent, you're going to look pretty good. (laughs) Cosmo would not have the willpower to study as hard as Rudy did to learn a different language. And I I, 100% (laughs) you're right. I think, which is why I think that's the a leech. Yeah, no, he would 100% just like stay at home and leech off of his parents, like, (laughs) and live Mm. in the village. Like, Mm-hmm. I don't think he would ever step outside the village, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I don't think so either. Because, uh, like, I know you don't, you're not supposed to think this about... Well, you actually are. Supposed to, Kazuma's kind of an asshole. <laughs> like, when you get right down to it, Kazuma's an asshole. And, like, Rudy's not. Rudy, I mean, for all of his faults, he's kind of a pervert and everything. But he actually has a good heart. And that's one of the things that makes him work in his world. Uh, but yeah, Kazuma in the Mishoku, he would be, he'd be like a lazy shut-in, I think, a lot like he would be in the real world. Um, Rudy, on the other hand, in Konosuba, I think would, he'd just be, a, he'd be regarded as a god, because he'd be willing to do all this stuff that no one else could do. Yeah, I feel like Rudy, if, if we transported, like, I guess it wouldn't be adult, uh, teenage Rudy from his world into Konosuba, I feel like he would do really well, and he would definitely, you know, go and fight the demon lord actually actively try to make an effort to save the world versus like kazuma who's kind of just like no i don't want to do that that's and then fucking you know go back to working odd jobs i also feel like rudy like wouldn't even bother with the companions that kazuma has because they're so useless i would argue you'd still no 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 i would argue rudy would be with the exact same party just because he could loot them you know Oh, you make a good point. He is a pervert. He is a pervert. And yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. I I didn't even think about it like that. <laughs> but would he end up with who would he end up with though? All three of them? I'd say Aqua. Hmm. Easiest to seduce. 
uh yeah i i i agree though like he would i think he would just become this absolute god in the konosuba world just because he's so much more competent than everyone else like a big part of the reason he was a neat in the real world was just because that he felt so downtrodden is that wasn't that he wasn't intelligent and he didn't have skills to offer it's just because the world had beat him down so much he just didn't care anymore well it was more like the world beat him down and you know, just because you put in effort doesn't mean you're always going to get the results you want. And just mm. after a vicious cycle of that, you kind of just get mentally worn down and you kind of just like, fuck it. Fuck the world. Yeah. Fuck everything. I'm just going to live at home and jack off to porn. Yeah. But I mean, it, the the story of Mishoka Tensei does go to great lengths to show that like Rudy didn't do this because he was stupid or he was a uh, like an actual failure and he actually... He worked hard, he just got no reward from it, and he became so disillusioned with the world that he was in. So it, he didn't become a need or a loser simply because he had no skills. It's just because he had no impetus to work hard anymore. Um, but anyway, that's what I think for 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 these two uh, for these two characters. John, yes. What do you, what do you got for your first pairing? Oh man. Cue the fucking background music. I'm not gonna actually add. I might. We might get uh, copyright checked if I add in the the hey, fucking please. <laughs> the March of the Kings music from Eins. So um, for my pairing, I've got the Almighty Eins Ulgon from Overlord, and as everyone knows, fucking love it. Favorite novel, mm. and um, his pairing is gonna be Rimuru Tempest from Slime Tensei, where I that time I reincarnated as a slime. Now, I was under the impression that, well, rather, I should say, I wanted to pick characters that were similar and then, like, had similar settings and also similar mindsets, kind of, and swap places. Because, so, background, Eins will go and reincarnates into, um, Yidri, or not Yidrizzle, into the New World, as we call it, and he he's left there and he's like, oh, he's a computer character. He's, he's his computer avatar, right? His game avatar. And he has his guild, and it's a it's a fantasy setting. And then we have Rimuru, who dies and reincarnates into the I don't actually know what the world is called, but in the Slime Tensei's world, as a slime, and same deal, just fun. <laughs> character, fantasy setting, powers, whatnot. And so uh, what are I'm not as familiar with Rimuru. What are Rimuru's powers? I'm he is basically slime. a necromancer, but what is Rimuru? Um, <laughs> overpowered piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> he's a slime. Basically, anything he comes bad. in contact with, he can then emulate. Yeah, so oh. as a slime, he can basically just take abilities of things that he devours. I see. So broken. Yeah. <laughs> so Very broken. much so. So, you know, both characters, overpowered. And something that I thought was a, a very common thread for them is that they're they're both very loyal, friendship driven. Like, Ayn spends a lot of time talking about like the reason he even goes out to the new world after he gets teleported is like he's trying to find his friends. He's like, we're gonna I'm gonna spread the name of my guild to see if any of my friends are here, and that's like his first goal. And um. He goes to great lengths to protect things that his friends have done. Like, he loves all the NPCs in Nazarick because it's like, these are like my friend's children. Like, they made these characters, and I love them like my own, like I'm their uncle or something. And, you know, he, in that one, uh, was it season three? In season three, when um you have the grave robbers come into Nazarick, he's just like, he gets super pissed off because he's like, I fucking hated this plan. I didn't want anyone to, like, sully the the tomb that me and my friends built and he's like pissed off and like oh man that was so great uh and it just shows a, a little peek into Ainz's like mentality of like he he cares very deeply about friendship and about bonds with those friends and Rimuru is very similar like extremely similar because Rimuru you know he becomes a, a slime and he starts protecting people and he creates these friendships and these bonds and you know he goes to very great lengths to save his friends very similar to how Ainz feels about his friends so i thought it'd be interesting to just swap them <laughs> because what was freaking Ainz's real name um suzuki satoru yes yeah so the the guy known as Ainz is suzuki satoru who's like typical japanese guy 
9 to 5 p.m. Uh, wage slave. Just all that all he does is work, and then he comes home and plays video games. Kind of similar to Rimuru, because Rimuru was just a 9 to 5 salary man as well. So they, they've got extremely similar backgrounds. But mm. <laughs> the difference here is that uh, Ainz is, like, super obsessed with a video game, so he knows a lot about the world. Versus Rimuru, who knows nothing about his world. He just knows, like, I'm a slime, and I must protect. So I thought it'd be interesting to see what would Ainz do if he was swapped into Rimuru's position where he reincarnates in this world, but as, like, an undead instead of a fucking slime. I think it's also worth mentioning that, uh, well, uh, both for Ainz and Rimuru, the the people that they were before they reincarnated, like, they were moderately successful people, too, like, monetarily. Like, I mean, they weren't what? So, they weren't social out. Well, well I'd say they were social. I'd say uh, Ainz was a social outcast because all he did was work and then come home and play video games. I so mean, me, isn't that all <laughs> Japanese men? <laughs> yeah, wow! Right. Wow! Exactly. <laughs> but I wow! Talk about a generalization there. At <laughs> least they had jobs. Like, yes, you're right. At least they they worked a nine to five, so they were um accepted by society they were a working yeah, man yeah and is shown to have some pretty good friends too because like when he gets murdered and sent to the new world like he's out with his friends oh yeah he's out with his no he's out with his kohai who's getting yeah. married Ah. i do i still to this day love that his last words to him are erase my browser history <laughs> No, he fucking deletes the entire computer. Fucking great. He throws the computer in the <laughs> bathtub. Oh, God. But my point is, what would Ainz do if he was in Slime Tensei's world where he reincarnates and I want him to stay as an undead because that'd be hilarious. Um, and he um, goes and does the same stuff. Like he meets uh, Valdora and then he goes and finds the village. And I kind of have a little cheat here because... Uh, there is a evil eye side story where basically Ainz gets um, reincarnated like 500 years before Nazarick shows up and he meets Kino or evil eye, the um, vampire girl, also known as Landfall, one of the 13 heroes. And he like it, it without Nazarick holding him back. He's he plays a different type of character. And I feel like Ainz would follow Rimuru's path basically to a T but he would be extremely less forgiving about the humans because as an undead, he really doesn't like have emotions, but he still mm. does feel like loyalty. So I thought it would be more interesting to watch um, Slime Tensei in a world where like he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> so in Overlord, um, Ainz leads like a uh, evil cabal of like, you know, monsters. Um, do you think he would gather... Uh, similarly evil companions if he went to Rimuru's world? I don't think so, no, because I feel like if he stumbled across the Goblin Village, he'd be very cautious at first because Ainz is a very cautious person. He's like, I don't know how strong I am in this new world. He needs to test the waters, but that's what makes the Goblin Village encounter like the best time to do it because it, it kind of like is it mirrors uh, Carne Village, right, in the very beginning of Overlord. Mm where he mm -hmm. comes across this, like, super underpowered village that's being attacked by an outside force. So I'm pretty sure he would intervene time and time and again. Like, Ainz, he's an evil guy. He's obviously, like, evil-aligned. He has negative karma, but he still has... Is he? Isn't he, like, neutral? No, no, he's, like, negative 5,000 karma. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like... Okay, I don't... Is that his, like, stats? Yeah. I'm just but thinking about like based off the novel. Personality is neutral. I feel like his personality is like, yeah, I, I'd say he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to hurt people, but he doesn't want to help people either. He's just like a neutral arbiter between the evil people and the good people. Well, I feel like his problem is that Nazarick really binds him. He knows he needs to play the role of a supreme leader. Yeah, for these like, people, he leads an evil organization, but I don't know he if he himself is evil. I don't think he's he himself is evil, but I mean he has no problem slaughtering people. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. it's shown very in the very first episode, he's like, "Yo, I don't even feel anything." Or in the second episode, I guess, where he's like, "Oh, I don't even feel anything when I kill people. I guess I really am undead, huh?" So like, 
I'm pretty sure the human side of him still has like um I don't know, a, a moral compass or something. But when it comes down to it, it's like they're attacking these people and I feel like I need to intervene. Do and, you think that do you think that if Ainz were actually transported into the Slime Tensei universe, he would try and build a nation like Rimuru does? I think it maybe yes and no because Rimuru kind of doesn't want to build a nation as well and it kind of just falls onto his lap and Ainz is kind of the same way where he doesn't actually want to like control the world with Nazarick but it kind of just falls into his lap <laughs> right mm. so I 100% think that it would Tempest would still be established um everything basically would just go the exact same I just thought it would be more interesting to watch how Ainz would fight against like the um the demon lords like Clayman, you know, another person who schemes mm. a lot because Ainz is someone who thinks a lot and he's in his head a lot. So I feel like it'd be a lot more interesting than just watching someone go, ah, I'm just going to go fuck you up and steamroll them all. I do think it, if it played out like that, I feel like Ainz uh, in, in the Slime Tensei world would probably use force to like conscript people into his nation that he is building more so than Rimuru uses words. Because, like, if you think about it, Rimuru talks people into following him more often than he fights them. Well, no. I think Rimuru just, like, spouts his ideals, but he's got power to back up his ideals, and people respect him for that and follow him out of that. You know, they're like, hmm. oh, you're a naive idiot, but you're a powerful naive idiot, and you're making your ideals come true. We'll follow you. Like, hmm. we'll, we'll, be, we'll enter a alliance with you. And I feel like Ainz would be the exact same, where he's like, you can see his power, and if he's fighting for these ideals where he's like, I just want to save this village and I just want to protect people. I, I feel like the other kingdoms would, first of all, they're all, they'd are all they all be scared shitless of Ainz, just like they're all scared of uh, Rimuru. But Rimuru has a very um, disalarming personality versus Ainz, who like doesn't really have that type of personality. He's more stoic. Stoic? Mm. Stoic. Stoic. Yeah. He's more stoic. So I feel like the, the nations that enter an alliance with Ainz and tempest at that point would be more out of fear than anything else but right. i mean that that happens in slime anyway with um one of the kingdoms that enters an alliance with rimuru so it's not too far-fetched true now so a lot of this has been about Ainz and slime tensei how would rimuru fare in <laughs> overlord so very interestingly, so we do have a slime character in Overlord. Uh, it's Par Paranochino-san? It's Harahara-san? Fuck. Yeah, it's Harahara-san. It's a slime that we see in episode one. So slimes obviously exist in uh, Overlord's universe. So if Rimuru reincarnates as one of those slimes, he would be an undead. Or rather, he would be in a non-human character, which would be slime. And they're actually pretty strong. Um... Because of their ability to dissolve everything and just fuck everything up. And I, I, I think it would be super interesting. I'm not entirely sure how it would work because I, I'm, I just base this off of the assumption that if Reamer reincarnated, he'd just take the role of Harrow Harrow-san. And that's someone who's also a supreme leader of this guild. So in my head canon, Reamer would have been, would have been a part of Nazarick anyway. And he just would t basically take Harrow Harrow-san's place as like one of the creators of the um, guild. And when he reincarnates, how his personality would be there, would be from there on. And since Rimuru isn't actually evil aligned, he's just like a, a creature. I think the world would be a lot different. Like there definitely would be less a uh, happy farm and more um, political, like, Hey, let's try to get along with everyone. Cause it's one of Rimuru's big things, right? He doesn't want to actually actively wage war against anyone. He just wants to create a nation where all people can get along. And, I mean, Nazarick and... <laughs> they they kind of do the same thing. <laughs> they created a nation. They, make, they created a town where, you know, all people of different races can get along. So, I, I feel like it'd work. I don't know. The Rimuru is a character who's just playing a game of civilization trying to just get a diplomacy victory. <laughs> Basically, yeah. The worst type of victory. It's always <laughs> domination that oh we should God. go for. Um, do you think Rimuru would get assassinated? 
because he doesn't think as far ahead as Ainz. I assume he doesn't think as far ahead as Ainz. I would assume he wouldn't get assassinated because one thing that sets Ainz and at this Rimuru apart from uh, the rest of the Riff Raff is that there's no one in the world that would be able to kill them, right? Like, in, in originally, uh, for Ainz's world, he's a level 90 undead, which is the max level for characters from Yig to Drazil. And the highest level character they've encountered so far is, like, level 60. And that's a paltry 30-level difference. And I'm not sure if anyone's ever played MMOs, but, you know, you're a level 90 grinding in a level 60 zone. You're going to one-shot everything with your auto attack. Like, mm. it's... So, I don't think they would even put a scratch on him, to be honest. And if it was... Well, because not only does... Uh, Rimuru still have Nazarek. They'd still have their personalities, so I'm pretty sure they'd have like the the eight edged assassins that hide in the ceiling and protect uh, Ainz at all times. Pretty sure Rimuru would have the same type of protection. Like there is an invisible force protecting them. Okay. What I'm hearing in all this is that they're basically the same damn character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Not the main bad. difference is that Rimuru is more uh, proactive. Like I, he obviously wouldn't want to slaughter people like the great cats war like where ein summons the the baby sheep something like that would never happen with rimuru at the helm so it just would be interesting to see how the new world would react to an all-powerful being who offers them you know a hand instead of having to fucking submit because they're gonna crush you all right question then would rimuru actually uh, would rimuru actually accept albedo's advances no, because he's a slime. He doesn't have a penis. But he could. <laughs> well, neither I mean, did yeah. I. <laughs> I don't think uh, he would... I think he would acknowledge uh, Alberto's feelings, but I don't think he would reciprocate them. Because, again, in this situation, he's just taking Haruharasan's place, so he would just be like another person who created Nazarick, and as someone who treasures his friends, I don't think he would sleep with his friend's daughter. Also, by the way, please don't sleep with your friend's daughters. General good advice. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we can move on to uh, show then, unless you had anything else you wanted to say about this bearing. No. I just thought it would be interesting because extremely similar characters, similar personalities, but completely different types of methods to their madness. All right. All right. Well, show. what do you got for your first pairing? It's well, an my one. pairing are two very different people <laughs> from two very different shows. So my first character is Jambami Yumeko from Kakegurui, uh, the woman who I model my life after, if you can't tell. Uh, so Kakegurui is basically like, I would consider it a sports thriller show about a high school where they decide your social standing by a series of gambling tournaments. So it's basically just a gambling show. Um, and the main character, Yumeko is um how do i say this a slut (laughs) well she's a gambling addict and she kind of orgasms when she gambles um and she's very over the top um and she's like a risk taker she's like a thrill seeker she's a daredevil she loves the thrill of the spill of the dice so that's (laughs) (laughs) it's not the only thing that's spilling when she's gambling (sighs) Oh, yeah. So that's my first character. Uh, and my second character is Aaron Yeager, which I'm sure everyone knows from Attack on Titan. If you don't know, it's basically a action horror about people living in a walled city being attacked by titans and dying. Um, and the main character, Aaron Yeager, is like your shonen protagonist who, like, through the story, eventually becomes very jaded and um, angry at the world. Although he was always angry. Okay, he gets angrier. <laughs> he starts angry, and he just keeps getting angrier. Anyways, so these are very two different, uh, two very different genres of shows. So, and I thought it would be fun, unlike y'all, <laughs> to to put two very different characters in different situations. Um, so now, I guess we can. I, start- I would assume that um, Yumiko she gets the Titan powers from them, right? Yes, I'm gonna say okay. yes. So is she gonna orgasm every time she turns into a titan so i was thinking what kind of titan she would be um there's already a female titan which is kind of weird because 
Listen, you can only have one token female in your show, so she's Clearly. already pu- <laughs> she's already pushing the other females out of the frame. Um, I was also thinking maybe she could be like the smiling Titan because she has a really great smile when she orgasms. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but there is also a smiling Titan, so I was thinking she can be the swagger Titan, where. Um, she just like, you know, those Titans where they just like have their arms in a, um, uh, in like a, I don't know what you call it, where like the crazy suit where you put your arms, where you can't move your arms and you, and like what they put you in, in a mental hospital. I forget what that's called. And then they just straight like, jacket, straight jacket, but they have their arms in a straight jacket and they just like twerk around and like, like swivel their body all around. And then they like. They're like, they walk really weirdly. I think that would be Yumeko. She'd be the swagger titan where she walks really weirdly because she's a weird individual. <laughs> swagger, huh? That's a really interesting I don't know what else it. to call it. What do you want to call it? Straight jacket challenged? titan? <laughs> Anyways. she you, got, you can't say Yumeko ain't got swagger, honey. She got all the swagger. Um, but yeah, I thought... Um, Yumiko would be really funny in the Attack on Titan universe because, you know, Aaron Yeager is kind of a scared little shit for most of <laughs> the <laughs> for most of the show. But Yumiko like has like a I don't know, a clinical problem where she has like no fear at all. She like loves the thrill of it. She's kind of like Hanji if Hanji looked good and was a main character. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying Hanji doesn't look good? Come on. <laughs> She's not my type. Um, Hanji should be the main character, but Attack on Titan. Well, if you I want Hanji to it. be the main character, you should uh, uh, be overjoyed by Yumiko because she's basically a better version of Hanji. Um, oh, I love Yumiko. She's an awesome so I just, character. Yeah, we love Yumiko. So I just imagine Yumiko just, um, you know, sitting down and having a nice cup of tea while all of her friends and comrades are just dying around her. And she's just like, like slowly orgasming as they all die and then <laughs> I just I don't know I think she would have a I think Yumiko would have a very fun time in the Attack on Titan universe and she would have a lot of plot armor as the reason why she doesn't die <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing new to the Attack on Titan universe plot armor Not hey fair. I was thinking about something have you ever seen High School of the Dead I have so you know the character of uh, Psycho, right? I don't remember the specifics. She's the crazy sword lady. The president? Okay, sure. Wasn't she I, the student I council think, president? I think she was a student council president, but I don't remember. Yeah, she's the daughter of the Yakuza, yeah. Yes, yes, which is why she has the swords. Um, but no, so there's a scene where she actually first gets the sword. And I think it's like the second episode or maybe the third of, she's of fucking masturbating with it where she's literally masturbating with the hilt of the sword and then like the <laughs> zombies are the zombies are like trying to get into the, the shack or whatever that they're Not in this. and she busts out with the sword and she's like i'm wet and starts slicing them down <laughs> that's exactly this. how i picture yumiko in attack on titan i mean i think she'd be a little more classy and a little more sadistic, but sure, we can go with that. That's exactly how I picture her being, though. If she's actually a titan who's I trying to attack people, here. I do think that she would get sexually aroused by attacking people. <laughs> I think it would be more interesting to watch Yumiko than it is to watch Aaron. That's for sure. Honestly, well, yeah. I would one hundred percent agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like, there's a lot of. There's a lot of Aaron being a little bitch. And it's just like, man, Yumiko don't give a fuck, right? Yeah, Aaron Yeager is a very um, typical shonen character. So he's not very that interesting to watch. But Yumiko, you don't see a lot of Yumikos. So I don't think it would be a, a shonen anymore. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the genre would be shonen anymore if a Yumiko main character came out. Um, I, I'm not sure. It would definitely be unconventional. I mean, it would still be an action horror. I don't see how the genre would change. But well, I, I'm just saying because Aaron is very shonen, like 
in his in the very beginning, Aaron is very shown in where it's like power of friendship. I got to yeah. do everything I can to save the world, blah blah blah. And it's mm-hmm. like, and, and that's what makes it really boring in the very beginning. And then you, <laughs> if you had Yumiko from the very beginning, where she's like, "Oh yeah, fucking death and whatnot." Oh yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not maybe it wouldn't be shonen shonen's so weird i That's like in sure. my mind shonen and action are interchangeable but i guess shonen has a very different uh set of tropes to it mm. and girl let the shonen free you know try new things <laughs> we don't all have to be carbon copies of each other no it's a tried and true method to making sure we get uh, hit that we can milk oh, for no. 30 years plus not this. He's got a point, you know. <laughs> what do you mean? You need to evolve. <laughs> anyway, so let's look at the reverse and put Aaron Yeager in uh, the gambling high school, um, which immediately I imagine Aaron Yeager in the high school um, women's uh, uniform, which I think he would look great <laughs> in. God. But... I would guess Aaron still would be a guy, or would he be a girl now? No, he he would be the same person. He would be a guy. Um, so I mean, so I guess he would wear the male uniform. Although I don't know, the first thing I think of is him in the female uniform. Just because I love the female uniform, honey. We love the female uniform. Anyways, beyond that, um, I feel like if he was like the child version of Aaron, uh, he would just fuck the school and run away. <laughs> <laughs> And just go explore the real world because in Attack on Titan, he was very sheltered. So I assume he would want to explore more of the world. And then he'd probably realize that he needs money to go see the world. And he'd be just, he'd just be hobo. Just be homeless on the street (laughs) begging for money. So he wouldn't even bother with the whole gambling thing. I mean, what? Well, I don't see why he would. I feel like a big part of his character is trying to go explore the world at large. So he trying to, he's just like, why am I here gambling? Maybe, maybe after he goes and tries, he escapes and he goes and tries to like see the world, but he can't. Maybe he comes back and he's like, okay, I need to gamble for money so I can afford a plane ticket. <laughs> see, <laughs> my entire thought was that Aaron would stay at the school and gamble because he hates the gambling system. So he has to gamble to try destroy to dis- the system. He would gamble to dismantle gambling? <laughs> not yes. This. Because he hates Titans, but he's a Titan. Come on, man. Not, <laughs> that, not the running theme. <laughs> it, that, it does kind of go with the theme. You're absolutely right about that. Um, And if he was, like, the later version of Aaron in, like, the most recent season, then I feel like, you know, he wouldn't run away. He would maybe just be a teacher. And then he would, like, secretly plot to kill all of the uh, rich, stu- uh, privileged students to like fuck the fuck so the, the entire student body at this particular school. What? Um, the school that this takes place at is for rich students. The private. Yeah, school. basically, that he he plots to, for them to kill each other, and then he would take take down the upper class, fuck the bourgeoisie. Yeah, honey. dismantle the establishment. Exactly. He would be a freedom fighter by being a high school teacher. <laughs> See, in my mind, this is a lot more interesting for Aaron's character than it is an attack. An attack on Titan? <laughs> Not <Yo. fair. laughs> Not fair. Man, he tell I don't disagree. Dis- I, I don't. I don't disagree. Actually, if you think about it, him, uh, Aaron, in the most recent season just kind of seems like your basic high school teacher. Jaded and, and tired Jaded, of the world. Tired, f- tired of everyone's shit. <laughs> completely underpaid for the amount of work he's going through. What I will say is that um, the sort of reaction faces in Attack on Titan where they have like 20 wrinkles on their forehead and they're like what the fuck did you just do would be so great in um Kakegurui because like whenever someone makes like a gamble Aaron Yeager will just make that face the and then like, super the dramatic <laughs> <laughs> and then the person will be like oh maybe I didn't want to make that move like I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> and Aaron it. Yeager just stares at them with I hate his this I hate face. this clashing of genres <laughs> I hate how I stupid that. it is, but how much I actually kind of want to watch it. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> it's a great time. Uh, I mean, 
Yeah, it sounds better than Attack on Titan. No, <laughs> not that. No, that's not why we're recording this. <laughs> uh, no. Well, thank. Th- if that's true, then thank God Natai isn't here because he'd be losing his fucking mind right now. Oh yeah, he would. <laughs> we did. He did himself a favor by not showing up. <laughs> he knew you were gonna start talking shit. <laughs> that's how. Yep. He, yep. I mean, <laughs> he should know me by now. Um. All right. Um. God, we're already 40 minutes into this. Holy shit. Man, we can really bullshit, can't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I guess I could do my next one, but I'm, I'm more interested in John's second one than I am my own second one. Oh, mine's not too interesting cause, because of the whole theme of taking similar characters and swapping settings. Like, I chose Gintoki from Gintama and uh, Saitama from One Punch Man. Now, both of these characters, Gintoki... So, Gintama... Uh, quick rundown it's it's a parody show like it it just makes fun of pop culture in japan and its setting is like japan like samurai class japan but in modern day future with aliens and shit i know it sounds weird gintama is a weird fucking show all right but it sounds weird john (laughs) because it is weird it's a weird fucking show but basically it's uh (laughs) people hate it when i say this but it's fucking true Gintama is just Japanese Family Guy. <laughs> Everyone hates that. Anyway, uh, you know what? You're you're mostly right, except with the more shonen aspects aspects of the show. The comedy is very much Family Guy esque. Yeah, it it just pokes fun of a lot of modern day culture things. And um, I chose Gintoki and Saitama because, and obviously, who doesn't know who Saitama is at this point? Right, One Punch Man. One Punch. Guy who punches everything with one punch and destroys the world. And so I, I chose Gintoki and Saitama because they both have very similar attitudes. They're very um, lackadaisical, laid back, and just, like, don't really care about very much. But they're also extremely powerful people who, like, when push comes to shove, they'll they'll fuck shit up. But for the most part, they just, like, want to go about their day and do whatever. And I think... Uh, Gintoki being in the One Punch Man universe, it'd be very similar where he's like, every day he doesn't want to do anything. He's doing odd jobs to get by and he's fucking broke living in the broke city. But (laughs) he's just like, uh, like Saitama, he doesn't really care about the hero system or about saving the world. He just wants to live his life and he would just fight shit because it annoys him. (laughs) Like, isn't that pretty much what he does in the actual show already? Mm, kind of yes and no there's actual story in um gintama with gintoki's past and stuff like that and it's actually really good but uh they're both good-hearted people at the end of the day who like are very powerful but (laughs) i just thought it'd be funny to watch gintoki's reactions in one punch man because like saitama he he has like dramatic reactions to things (laughs) like when saitama's late for uh the sale you know he's pissed off (laughs) he fights against rage carnage beetle or whatever same gintoki would be the same where he's like like he'd be like i need a shit and then he fucking punches the shit out of something and kills it so he runs home to go take a shit i just thought it'd be funny to watch him do that and now on the reverse putting saitama into gintama saitama and gintama <laughs> Not wow too many tamas <laughs> too many balls man i think uh if he was in the same position where he has an odd jobs place and He's just super powerful. Very similar where he would just, like, make just enough money to get by, but not try to do anything else beyond that because it's too much of a fucking hassle. And I thought (laughs) it'd be funny to watch Saitama just, like, one-punch everything in the Gintoki universe or Gintama universe. Like, anything shows up, he just one-punches it and fucking walks away. Like, and then everyone would be like, oh, you're so strong. He'd be like, whatever. When's the next sale of uh, Shonen Jump coming out? (laughs) That That's... Really, it. It's not. How do you too think? How do you think Saitama would would have handled like the constant getting canceled uh, announcements? <laughs> not that. <laughs> I don't think. How would care. that? Have, how would that have worked? It would have been like the episode where uh, Gintoki is like, "Ah, oh, yeah, whatever. We're getting canceled again," and just like sits down and watches TV and scratches his ass. You know. <laughs> I, I feel like that's how he would react to it because. Honestly, I don't think he would care either. He'd be like, oh, well, that sucks. But the network has spoken. I mean, you're probably not wrong. 
<laughs> the one thing I've always... I mean, I'm not a huge Kintama fan by any means, but the one thing I've always noticed about its comedy is that Gintoki himself is rarely ever the instigator of the comedic elements. It's usually the things happening around him that lead to the comedy. I don't know. He kind of, um, he doesn't play the, um, the straight man. Like Shinpachi plays the straight man in Gintama's universe. Gintoki does do like absurd things. (laughs) Hmm. He absolutely does absurd things. And I've always equated like, cause I, I sort of equate, um, Gintama, like you uh, equate it with family guy. I sort of equate it to Seinfeld in a way where Gintama or Gintoki rather is, is sort of the Kramer of this world. And like, you have all the other people around him that are instigating these things. And like, he's just reacting to it as a crazy person would. Well, a crazy and apathetic person would. Which is why Saitama would fit perfectly into the Gintama universe. Because <laughs> he would just react to He doesn't actually instigate anything. No, he wants to be left to fuck alone. <laughs> so, leave, leave me alone. I'm busy. What are you doing? Though I guess uh, Saitama's motivation in life is like to try to find something that will actually give him a challenge. So when it comes to like the Edo government, like overstepping their bounds and stuff with the Shinsengumi, I, I feel like Saitama would do better than Gintoki does in those situations. Just because Gintoki, like, he doesn't really care. <laughs> He's hmm. like, whatever, you guys do whatever. I don't want any part of this. It's too much trouble. Versus Saitama, if he thought it was worth... Then again, Saitama also doesn't want to do... go through the trouble unless it meant he could fight someone strong. So I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. All right. Uh, should we keep going or should we end it there? Because we're getting close to the 50-minute mark. Um, I don't know. Should we do one more? Show. do you want to do yours or no? Um, I could if you want to. All right, we'll do it. yours and then we'll, we'll, call it, we'll call it quits for this... Uh for this year okay so my characters are uh yoon bum from killing stalking uh which is a manhua (laughs) and uh is basically a horror about a killer um and a stalker and they're very very unconventional unhealthy relationship with each other and yoon boom yoon bum i can't pronounce korean i'm sorry is the stalker who is like frail um you know obsessive and um easily injured and and he he gets injured a lot in the in the show so or in the manhua or whatever that's yunbum and then we're switching him with albedo from overlord which we talked about before and albedo is I guess Ainz's head um, assistant, and she's kind of a succubus who's in love with Ainz, uh, and she's very she's also very obsessive about Ainz, and she always wants to get with Ainz, but Ainz is like, no, thank you, I am not interested. And Albedo is also like a warrior, I guess. I don't know. She has armor. She fights with a sword. She's like. And she's very, uh, I guess, controlling. Not controlling. She's like the leader of the henchmen. So she manages everything. She's a very managerial person. So that's her. And we're going to switch them. Uh, and I thought it would be interesting putting Yunbum into the uh, overlord world in Alberto's position because Alberto's relationship with Ainz is already awkward. <laughs> so <laughs> that's one word for it. So Yunbub is is an even more awkward person. Um, and I don't know how to say this without spoiling it, but let's just say he has a. I don't... Okay, whatever. We won't. Okay. Anyways, Yunbum would have a very awkward relationship with Ainz. Uh, and I, it would, like... It wouldn't be as aggressive as Albedo, but it would kind of be, like, a creep. Like, just, like, you know... Um, <laughs> just uh, tailing Ainz around everywhere and, like, spying well, are on Are we really him. gonna pretend that what Albedo does toward Ainz isn't just a little bit creepy? 
Oh no, no definitely. <laughs> Stalker. But like, like I feel like Alberto is more forward. She's not like um she's not she doesn't hide it. Yeah. Whereas Yunbum would be like creeping around. I don't think Alberto can hide it. I like even if she tried, she wouldn't be able to. Yeah, and I think Alberto hides it pretty well, in my opinion, because Ainz has zero idea about the Dakimakra, about the fact that Alberto goes and sleeps in his bed when he's not there. So yeah, but he wouldn't be surprised up. if that <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Alberto is very straightforward with her feelings for Ainz. Yes. Just not with and her And it's fun to activities. watch her get denied over and over again. Yes. So, like... It's it's awkward having someone being the clear aggressor and which is Alberto, and then Ainz being like no thank you. But then it's even more awkward when Yunbum isn't very straightforward and is just creeping around looking for Ainz, and then Ainz is mm. like, uh, <laughs> Ainz doesn't even get the opportunity to say no because Yunbum would never like confess. <laughs> I don't know. So, I feel like that that's pretty interesting because um. One of Alberto's sisters is like that, so. Yeah. And yeah, Yumbum is, like, very shy and, um, yeah. He's so very if, timid. So if Ainz, like, ever confronted him, he'd probably just, like, back shit away and not say anything. <laughs> probably shit his pants. <laughs> and Overlord is kind of based on D&D. So in combat, I feel like Yunbum would be, like, a, a wizard. Because I feel like he's too weak to be anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be interesting I think he'd look cute in wizard robes so we gonna dress him oh up like that um, and if we reverse it and we put Albedo into uh, Yunbum's <laughs> position where <laughs> Yunbum gets abused a lot by the killer <laughs> physically yeah, and that's mentally that's putting it mildly <laughs> Physic- very physically and very mentally both graphic <laughs> Uh, no, no. Oh, physically, emotionally, and sexually. <laughs> yes. Which I feel at first, Alberto would like hold her own ground, but I feel I don't know. I it would be really interesting because in Overlord, Alberto doesn't really have much of a a character arc or character growth. But if she was subjected to what Yunbum was subject subjected to, I feel like she'd have to have some sort of um character change her or a uh, personality change because there's no way she could maintain her uh i don't know her she's very i guess she's a s- emotionally stable person you could say in some ways she knows what she wants and she's she knows that she's gonna get it uh but i feel like she would get broken down if she was in Yunvum's place so, yeah, I mean, the thing with Albedo is, like, with her feelings towards Ainz, it's something that she wants. I feel like if she were in Yunbum's place and, you know, all this was being forced on her, it suddenly wouldn't be so fun for her. I, I assume that Albedo would not be in love with the killer in Killing Stalking. I, I would hope so. So I feel like she wouldn't want this at all. So I don't know. I think that would be interesting for Albedo. Honey... It would be very hard to watch, hard to see, but, you know, Alberto, we we appreciate Alberto's character, and we need to see her grow. Maybe well, after that, fair. she'll move on from Ainz and live her own life as an independent succubus. Maybe. I mean, to be fair, though, like, the entire story of killing stalking is pretty hard to witness. It's it's very disturbing. It is And very rightly disturbing. so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's literally about someone t- keeping someone hostage and abusing them over the span of, well, over a span of time, and that mm-hmm. person that that Yunbum developing Stockholm syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would think yeah, it would I, be... I feel like I'll, I feel like Alberta would actually have a much more defined character arc if she were in a world like that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that would be interesting to see her character arc in that situation. Hmm. Honey, Alberto deserves better. Alberto deserves to be the main character in her own oh my show. God. Okay, and we need to give that to her. Alberto's spinoff win. Fucking never. Honey, Overlord was the spinoff. We're, re- <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. we're waiting for the main series featuring Alberto. <laughs> that, that, that's a new way to go about uh, creating a world. You create the spinoff before you create the main work. 
Yeah, you gotta do a little teaser and then just drop it on them. Man, uh, the, the the creator of Overlord really is doing like a 1500 IQ play right here. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. yeah. You know what? When I first saw this, I was like, that's a really weird combination of characters. But now hearing you talk about it, I'm like, makes sense. See, I completely thought that Alberto was going to be like into it and be like wanting the killer to abuse her and stuff. I thought that's where we were going to go with it. But now I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it, if that were the case, he would have had to put someone like fucking uh, Darkness from Konosuba in there. Well, because I Alberto guess. is very... Um, I think Alberto would have zero problems uh, going along with the killer and finding someone else to abuse. It's to interesting because be Alberto like is a very anime character where she's very uh, over the top and like nonsensical. Like, like it doesn't really make sense what she's doing. She's very over the top. Whereas Killing Stalking is like very, it's like hyper realistic about um, this about mental illness and and um, kidnapping and abuse and torture. So. I it, I don't I don't know how those two would mesh because that character really that character like a, uh, a I don't know what kind of character that is a masochist character an an anime version of a masochist character or a Yandere character just would not would not hold up to that kind of treatment that you get in Killing Stalking. I agree. I'll bet it would just kill the killer. <laughs> oh yeah, oh that's true. It would be it would be a one one uh OVA where the killer tries to torture Alberto and then she just kills the killer and then leaves. It'd be like a manhwa one shot. <laughs> Not the Well then Alberto would become the killer and then find her eyes in that world and Oh no. Then she becomes the main character. Oh uh, yeah, that that that's exactly what'll happen. <laughs> All right, well, this is a fun little exercise. Uh, we might have to do this again sometime uh, with some different characters. Uh, thank you uh, to Korn Sensei in our Discord server for suggesting this. Um, like I said, it was a fun exercise. Next time, we'll definitely have to get in a tie in here because I feel like he could uh, come up with some interesting combinations as well. Um, and if you actually out there listening do have suggestions for characters that we should do this to, let us know. Uh, until next time, uh, thank you out there for dropping in to listen to us. Check the description below to find links to Anime Club, After Dark, on Twitch, on social media, and on Discord. Check out our merch store and our affiliate links as well. Any purchases you make there do really help us out. With that, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night. Kakegurui, <laughs> uh, Masha. I'm seriously, though, like. Put Aaron in a skirt, and it, it might actually make Kakegurui nice. I don't know. Who knows? I hate it here. <laughs> it can't be any worse, right? Well, give me those upskirts, honey. <laughs> Aaron Yeager upskirts. I'm down for it. Give me the panty shots. <laughs>